Hey guys, I'm Tomo Tech Chap, and this is the new ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. And I absolutely adore this thing, and it might just tempt me away from my MacBook Pro. Now, before we dive in properly, a big thank you to ASUS for setting this out for me to have a play with, and also NVIDIA for sponsoring this video, because they were keen for me to test this, run my benchmarks, and just see what an NVIDIA GeForce 40 series laptop GPU in one of these new 14-inch form factors is actually capable of. So what makes this so special? Well, let's talk about the screen first. 14.5 inch, 2.8K, 120Hz OLED touchscreen with Dolby Vision, top notch color accuracy. We're talking 100% DCI-P3, it's Pantone validated, and it supports the ASUS Pen 2 for all you doodlers and drawers and designers out there. Inside, we have an Intel 13th Gen i9, the 13900H. That's a 45 watt chip, which can actually be boosted up to 75 watts, together with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 laptop GPU, which is actually a 90 watt TGP variant of the card, but uh, ASUS and NVIDIA have actually boosted it in here, so it's a 110 watt TGP. And thanks to ASUS's Ice Cool Pro thermal technology, uh, we actually can have up to 125 watt combined TDP uh, between the CPU and the GPU, which can dynamically shift. I also have a slightly peculiar 48 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Uh, that's two memory modules, one 32 gig, one 16, and that's paired with a whopping two terabyte PCI4 SSD. But what's special here is that this kind of performance in this smaller form factor just really wasn't possible uh, until this new series of GPUs from NVIDIA. It really is thanks to the vastly improved power efficiency and performance uh, of this new ADA architecture that we get with the 40 series cards uh, that makes this possible. And together with improved cooling and also the likes of DLSS3 and other software features, we've never had performance like this on a small form factor laptop, uh, whether it's for gaming or you know creative workloads and actually doing some work with it as well. This is very much a creator laptop first, I would say, gaming laptop second, but there's such crossover, you really can use it for both. And on top of the raw performance of the GPU, we have all of NVIDIA's tasty extras. For gaming, you've got DLSS3, now with frame generation, NVIDIA Reflex, ray tracing, which, as it says on the tin, generates entirely new frames, not just new pixels. But then for your rendering, editing, streaming, you've got the AV1 encoders, you've got their studio drivers, and their NVIDIA broadcast suite, just to name a few. By the way, if you're wondering the difference between a game-ready driver and a studio driver, essentially all those game drivers are still packaged within that studio driver, but they've also spent more time testing this with a wider range of professional and uh, creative applications. So you can definitely game with the studio drivers, although they may not be quite as up-to-date as the game-ready ones, but they're not far behind these days. But if you are using this as a workstation, then you probably want to go with studio. Why 14 inches, or more specifically in this case, 14 and a half inches? Well, obviously portability. I mean, compared to a 15, 16, 17 inch laptop, this is a whole lot smaller and easier to carry around all day, whether you're going to school, the office, work, whatever it may be, a gaming LAN party. And also it's a little bit less obnoxious if you're bringing out in a coffee shop. And also if you've ever tried to use a 15 or 16 inch laptop on a tray table, on a train or a plane, and actually the other day I did have a 16 inch laptop with me on an economy flight and the lady in front of me reclined, and it hit the top of the screen, and for a second I thought it was going to shatter the whole thing. Not ideal. So there are definitely benefits, clearly, to the compact, smaller, more portable size of a 14-inch form factor. But then the other side of it is when you do get home, or to your studio, or to the office, because we've got such a great range of ports, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, you can hook it up to a nice big external display if you like. So that way you have more of your screen real estate. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Portable for when you're traveling, but a nice little hub for when you're back at the office. Which is all great in theory, but the question is, especially with a laptop like this, which is geared towards uh, creators, professional workstation users, and also uh, gamers, is it powerful enough? How fast is this thing? Well, let's find out. And to add a bit of context, let's also bring in my MacBook Pro with its M2 Max and 64 gigs of memory. But then more importantly, some real world benchmarks. The ZenBook is on average 8% behind the MacBook in the Premiere Pro Puget test. Sadly, the DaVinci Resolve Studio Puget test doesn't support Mac right now, so I can't do that comparison. But then if I bring in my Blender results, firstly from the Blender benchmark, you can see the ZenBook is around twice as fast as the MacBook, which is pretty crazy. But what about gaming? Well, I think regardless of performance, there's a pretty clear advantage for the ASUS because it's running Windows, which obviously has a, access to a much bigger library of games than a Mac does. But if we fire up the classic Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the ZenBook is twice as fast. And actually, even without DLSS, if we run it again and turn it off, it's still a third faster. 
And in fact, to give you an idea of how much of an impact the 4070 has over the ZenBook's integrated Intel Xe graphics, well, it's about five times faster. And just for fun, I also ran the Blender benchmark again. The GPU makes it around 10 to 20 times faster. And so if I bring in the rest of my gaming results, and I'm consistently getting close to that 120, which means we're fully taking advantage of the screen's high refresh rate. And as I say, a huge part of it is down to these new cards with the much more efficient architecture. So we're using less power, but getting better performance. Now it's worth mentioning that I ran all my tests with the MUX switch set to discrete GPU. By default, it's on MS hybrid, so it can use the integrated or the discrete uh, based on what you're doing, which is obviously better for battery life. And also in terms of the fan profile, I've set it to performance. Uh, you have also got standard and whisper, which uh, limits the wattage of the components and therefore also lowers the fan noise, which you might want if you're using this out in public. But one thing I did note, is that in the ProArt Creator Hub here, you also have full speed mode for the fans in addition to the three other options that were in the MyAsus app. Now you can hear it's pretty loud, although if you've got a good pair of headphones with noise canceling, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but I did find that in this mode specifically, it did boost my results and my frame rates by like 10% across the board. So if you can put up with that noise, maybe you're rendering a video or you know, you've got good headphones, then I would definitely keep it in full speed mode. So that's a pretty good start, but let's talk about what we get on the outside. And in terms of ports, we have two Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C's, as well as a Type-A, that's a USB 3.2 Gen 2, a audio combo jack, full-size HDMI 2.1, and yes, an SD card reader, full-size UHS-2, so really fast SD card reader, very nice. We also have a full HD IR webcam, so you can have fast face locking in any lighting really, a huge touch pad, which also includes Asus's famous dial pad in the corner here, and that is all packaged in an incredibly well-built laptop. This is one of the sturdiest machines I've used in a long time. There is not a lick of flex or screen wobble. I mean, if I put some pretty serious pressure into that, it does not budge at all. We also get Gorilla Glass protecting the screen because it is a touchscreen. These super thin bezels, which are flush, which is very nice, except for this tiny lip at the edge uh, for protection. And they've crammed all that in a chassis that's just 17.9 millimeters thick. And it tips the scales at just three and a half pounds or 1.6 kilograms thereabouts. My only complaint is it does get a little bit smudgy. You can see my fingerprints all over the lid here. I'm genuinely really excited about this laptop, and in many ways, it's kind of like the Windows MacBook Pro 14, except this can also play games as well. Going back to the MyAsus app here, that you've got options for everything, basically, from uh, changing the screen color profiles. We also have all the OLED care settings, like pixel refresh, because of course you want to prevent burn-in, uh, which isn't something you really have to worry about, especially with all these, which is set to default. And as I say, on top of all that, we also have the ProArt Creator Hub, because this is very much a creator laptop, and also we have this Asus dial pad down here. If you're not familiar, you can use this to do simple stuff like adjust brightness and volume within Windows, or more app-specific stuff like scrubbing through a project timeline or zooming in and out. I also appreciate there's a subtle groove and you can kind of feel your way around the dial, which means you can kind of use it without looking. And what I do kind of like is unlike its bigger brother, the uh, ProArt Studio Book, uh, which has a big physical dial pad next to the key uh, touchpad and keyboard, you can just turn this off if you want. A little swipe from the top right corner of the touchpad turns it on and off. So you don't have to use it if you don't want to, it doesn't get in the way, but if you do, well, you have that extra option there. Quick mention of battery life and it's Okay, uh, we have a 76 watt hour cell in here, which is not bad for a 14 inch form factor. Uh, and Asus claim you'll get up to about 10 hours of light use. In my experience, it's a little bit less than that. I got around seven hours, but sort of six and a half, seven hours of light use uh, with sort of 50% brightness, whisper mode, fan profile. And obviously if you are doing more demanding tasks, then it's gonna drain the battery much faster. And also you're not gonna get that maximum performance. So generally keep it plugged in if you're doing anything intensive, but for just everyday travel light use at the office, you, you get about a full day if you're careful. Also, while this screen is absolutely glorious, uh, we're looking at about 480 nits in SDR and 550 nits peak in HDR, and that's pretty good for an OLED, but you're not gonna get any kind of crazy bright HDR experience that you might get on a regular TV or with a mini LED screen, for example. Although I do appreciate this supports Dolby Vision HDR and also Dolby Atmos. And actually the speakers on this are pretty good. And so that, my friends, is the ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. Starts from around $2,100. I'll put more pricing info in the description below. And also have a look at NVIDIA's full range of GeForce RTX 40 series laptops. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy one of these? And if you did pick one up, what would you use it for? Gaming, editing, developing? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time, right here, 
on the Tech Chat.